General Election Bishop Isil Kafor of Okadasis urges Nigerians not to be swayed by money. President Buhari signs 2023 appropriation bill. In Ukraine, Russian anger grows over strike that killed dozens of troops. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saluda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good evening, you all welcome to the news. My name is Chidema Orangwa. The state governor, Professor Chukuma Saludo, has condemned the cult related war among rival groups and subsequent killings in Obose Idel Milenov and Opono in Oka South Council areas of the state. In a statement released by the state press secretary to the governor, Mr. Chris Aburime, Governor Saludo condemned these killings in the strongest terms and has assured that the perpetrators will be apprehended and decisively dealt with. According to the statement in Obose of the community, Honorable E.K. Okolo was reportedly shot dead in a patrol station on Monday, 2nd January 2022 by gunmen while in Obi Madaka's compound within Nodo Square, Nodo Obono. Four people identified as Onyebo Okoye, Kenechuku Okeke, Jude Ebenezer and Obi Namaduka were also killed by gunmen. While stressing that the killers will be hunted down to face the full wrath of the law, the governor recalled that the festive season, uh, Anambra had enjoyed the best uh, Christmas ever in decades as it was traffic free and a new system of traffic control put in place by the government during the festive season with Anambra youth volunteers and the state traffic management agency working 24 hours at all the critical points to, to control traffic. Governor Saluda reassured that 40 yesterday will surely be tracked down and dealt with decisively in accordance with the law. He called on Indian Umbra to go about their normal businesses and duties and enjoy the season as the challenges are isolated cases that will be nipped in the bed soon. Governor Chukuma Saluda has called for strengthening public and private partnership in the development of Anambra State. The governor made the call while commissioning four separate projects done by philanthropist High Chief Ike Chuku Abogo for his Umochiogo Kindred and Obago village of Unri community and also local government area. Government House correspondent Emmanuel Okonkwa tells us more. <laughs> The projects include 500 kVA transformer, 2 kilometers road, borehole facility, an ultra modern hall built and powered with 40 kV generator set for his Umochiogo kindred. Governor Soludo, represented by his deputy, Dr. Nye Kachukui Bezim, said that government alone cannot achieve the desired development in the state, hence the need for the likes of High Chief Abogo and private organizations to assist the government in providing social amenities for the people as a way of fast-tracking development. He noted that his government is ready to partner any group or individual who means well for the state and commended the philanthropist describing the gesture as an act worthy of emulation. We always give um, the many example. So finding individuals who are coming back, the virus in our community, where was, and I hear there are more to be commissioned. So it's my pleasure, on behalf of the governor, Number of states, so charge for my solution. This time around, we share function. Okay, a lot of places to go there to show you how important it is to us and how we want to encourage you. We want others. Late. Speaking, the Transition Committee Chairman for Anocha Local Government Area, Sir Gerald Ikechuku, thanked High Chief Abogu for the humanitarian work, expressing hope that the gesture will give birth to more projects in the community and Anocha in general. <laughs> Of 
The benefactor, High Chief Abuogo, thanked God for helping him to complete the whole project, saying that he was moved to embark on the project because of the love he has for his people and promised to do more for Nri people. For this is no small measure, it means the man is a huge contribution to cycle of development. With this feeling of fulfillment, I will transform the desire and vision of my late father was to avoid his cycle of development to reality. How can you put a hole when you are not able to build yourself and let it be for country home? For the positive voice said, if you build this hall, I will build you a square in this for a country home. And this is just what the way it is present. Among dignitaries at the event were the chairman, Anambra State Traditional Rulers Council, and the traditional ruler of Onisha, Igwen Nemeka Achebe, the former managing director of Anambra State Signage and Advertisement Agency, Sajud Emecheta, from Unri. In an Ocha Council area, I am Emmanuel Okonkwo, reporting for ABS News. The Catholic Bishop of Oka Diocese, Most Reverend Paulinus Azul Kafu, has appealed to Nigerians to avoid being influenced by money during this year's general elections in the country. Most Reverend Azul Kafu, who made the appeal in his New Year message, said it is time for the electorate to declare the stand on how to better the country. He decried the poor governance in the country, which has led to untold economic hardship, insecurity, unemployment, and added that there is need to liberate the masses from literal bandage. Most Reverend Azul Kafu asked those who are yet to collect the permanent voter cards to go and collect it as it is the only instrument to use to better the country. The prelate expressed the hope that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will provide a level playing ground for all political parties and called on the people to vote their conscience and for candidates that in know that will address the situation of the country. He thanked God for the past year and the grace to enter into 2023, stating that the new year calls for hard work, continuation of God's love and bettering the lives of people. The traditional ruler of Umueri, Igwe Beneth Emeka, has urged Nigerians to persevere and pre preserve their PVC, participate actively and vote to their conscience in the coming election for a better Nigeria. Igwe Emeka, who made the call in his New Year message at his palace in Umueri, advised them not to sell their vote to enable them elect a good candidate that God will use and pilot in the affairs of the country. The Umueri monarch urged the people to keep a trust in God, who he said, that makes a king as his mercy and grace will see the country through. Igwe Emeka, who wished Nigerians, Indian Ember, and the people of whom happy and prosperous New Year, advised them to have faith in God and be prayerful for accomplishment of his purpose for Nigerians. Igwe Emeka appealed to Indian Ember to give maximum support to the Governor Chukuma Saludo administration to enable him achieve a livable and prosperous Anambra state, commending him for embarking a massive red construction projects across the state. He advised people to imbibe good virtues that will entrench peace, development and crime-free society. The Prime Minister of Anambra State Association of Town Unions asset to achieve Johnny Meche has been promoted and decorated as the Assistant Commander General ACG of Nigeria Hunters and Forest Security Services. By the promotion, he assumes duty as ACG in charge of technical services. Njideka Okoye has details of this report. Chief Meche was carried out by the Commander General of the Service, Dr. Joshua Osati Mehin, at their headquarters in Dauko District, Abuja. In view of this, the Nigeria Hunters and Forest Security Services, Anambra State Command, paid a courtesy visit to Chief Meche at his country home in Umweri, Anambra East local government area to congratulate him on his new appointment. The group led by the commander Anambra State Command of the service, Chief Titus Ogudogo, also used the opportunity to decorate some officers of the command. Chief Ogudogo who stated that Anambra State is number one state setting the pace in the southeast. Thanked God for raising Chief Meche to assist in establishing the service in Anambra, pledging their support to ensure effective security services in Anambra State and beyond. Mr. Gudogo said that the service was established, among other things, to protect farmers across the nation, urging people to join the service 
to serve humanity. If a huntable is a sec all security club, then see edge when my police, when my army, the end of the end of the security. When I hunt up because of now, when we're in the movie, but we're in mafia. Everybody was in the event, and my was in the mafia. The way we're supposed to see hunter as a federal security. Kai, when we're in the movie, all the way in the book. Responding, Chief Meche, who is also the President General of Umwil, thanked the Commander General for finding him worthy of the appointment and promised to redouble his efforts towards the security and well being of Anambra State and Nigerians in general. Chief Meche said that as the African Director of the International Association of World Peace Advocates, the position of Assistant Commander General of the Hunter's Body would help in his peace efforts as security is essential to peace. He called on President Muhammad Buhari to sign into law the Hunter's Bill, which he said has been passed by the Senate and the House of Representatives and charged the members to be prepared for a greater service. To save life and properties, my message to other Nigerians, to join hunters. I want every Nigerian to be a member of this honorable service. I'm calling on the federal government as quickly as possible to sign into law, especially the president, to sign the bill that's presented to him. To sign it, let hunters become into law, let it come into law. This will help a lot. We're talking about employment. We've got the vehicle. Hunters, we can employ a lot of people. The President General of Umweri later donated and hand over a Siena car to the group for effective security services. Presentation of award to Chief Meche and inspection of parade climaxed the event. From Umweri, Njideka Okoye, ABS News. Over 1,000 persons living with different ailments in Achina and surrounding communities have received the free medical treatment from Lift A Widow Initiative, the two-day medical outreach held at the Ami Yi Health Center Achina in Agata Loki Government Area is an annual program of the organization that started in 2009. Correspondent Chukwe Bekamodalim completes the report. Of the free medical outreach program include widows, youth, children, and the elderly. The free medical services provided to them include blood pressure check, eye test, sugar level test, malaria test, among others. According to one of the organizers of the program, Dr. Beatrice Ezenwa, members of the organization engaged different healthcare professionals, consultants, and specialists areas in medicine who examined the patients while their pharmacists gave them the prescribed drugs free of cost. She further explained that patients who have minor eye problem were treated and given eyeglasses while those with major cases that require surgery were referred to hospitals where they could be taken care of. Since 2009, I've been organizing a health outreach for indigenous of Africa. and yeah, we have not missed any year. For me, and since we started, it has been um, a free program for them. We call different professionals, healthcare professionals, uh, consultants, um, specialists in different areas in medicine. They do come here. We do have uh, obstetricians, uh, gynecologists, we have pediatrician, I'm a pediatrician. And we do have some professors who do come here. Uh, On her part, the president of Lift a Widow Initiative, Barista Chiwe Ezenwa Mba, who regretted that many people have died because they could not afford to pay for their medical treatment, explained that the free medical outreach was aimed at giving the less privileged access to quality medical care. She, however, called on the beneficiaries to always take their health issues seriously by always going for regular medical checkup and treatments while appreciating the organization for bringing healthcare services at the doorsteps of Achina people. It has grown and we started, as of today we are now into 900. It's when you come in, you go straight to register for our people 
to meet with doctors and consult with them free of charge. The medical director of Ami Ye Hospital, Achena, Dr. Ikenna Erundu, noted that the exercise has helped the less privileged assess proper health care and urged other non-governmental organizations to emulate them some of the beneficiaries including Mrs. Selene Ezakunna, Mr. Benjamin Mwazuroke, and Mrs. Chibuzo Ezenacho thanked the organization for their benevolence and for making it a point of duty to promote wellness in the community. Knowing that this day that you can come out in a place that you get it for free, you understand? It's a very nice arrangement. So I really thank the people that organize this. Understand? And I hope that more sponsors come in so that it can reach out not only Ashina but Aguata local government. <laughs> From Achena, Chukwe Meka, Mordelem, ABS News. On the news tonight, uh, President Mohamed Buhari has signed into law the 2023 appropriation bill of 21.83 trillion naira. Buhari signed the bill of the councillor chambers of the State House in Abuja. A budget breakdown indicates an allocation of 967.5 billion naira for statutory transfers, 6.6 trillion naira debt servicing. 8.3 trillion naira for recurrent expenditure and 5.9 trillion naira for capital expenditure. The 2023 appropriation bill has deferred two weeks ago over what the Senate president described as a problems discovered in it. The 2023 budget of 21.83 trillion naira maintained the recurrent expenditure at approximately 8.27 trillion naira, while capital expenditure increased from 5.33 trillion naira to 5.9 trillion naira, and debt servicing increased from 6.31 trillion naira to 6.6 trillion naira. The Tertiary Institution Revitalization Fund of 300 billion naira and salary negotiation of 170 billion naira captured in the 2023 appropriation bill. Why 10.2 billion naira has also been provided for the university's pension, including arrears. And on the foreign scene, Russian nationalists and some lawmakers have demanded punishment for commanders that accused of ignoring dangers as anger grew over the deaths of dozens of Russian soldiers in one of the Ukraine war's deadliest strikes. In a red disclosure, Russian's defense ministry said 63 soldiers were killed on New Year's Eve in a fiery blast that destroyed a temporary barracks in a vocational college in Makivka, twin town of the Russian occupied regional capital of Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. Russia's critics said the soldiers were being housed alongside an ammunition dump at the site, which the Russian Defense Ministry said was hit by four rockets fired from U.S. made HIMARS launchers. Igor Grikin, a former commander of pro-Russian troops in eastern Ukraine, who is now one of the highest profile Russian nationalist military bloggers, said hundreds have been killed or wounded. Ammunition has been stored at the site and military equipment were also uncamouflaged, he said. The 2022 Nanka Marathon, powered by Nanka Youth in Diaspora, has ended as Mr. Ugo Chukundoka and Ms. Olwebebe Okoli, both from Enugu Village of the community, emerged winners in both male and female categories, respectively. Nanka Marathon is a sporting activity initiated in 2019 by Nanka Youth in Diaspora and the vision of encouraging, imagining, and hidden sport talent, as well as promoting mental and physical fitness among too many youths of the community. Correspondent Emmanuel Chiwata tells us more. Of the athletes were shocked to ensure fitness to participate. The fourth edition kicked off at Ostika Field in Fitananka through Okwobia and Oku Roundabout back to Ostika Field to Afonanka and terminated at Noro's Sports Stadium Nanka. 
the race was an interesting one as fans were chasing and hailing the fastest runners on top of moving motorcycles and in vehicles, while other racers who could not make it were assisted through ambulance. After the marathon, Mr. Ugochuku Ndoka came first, followed by Mr. Kileshi Egu, both from Enugu village and Chukwode and Anakoba of Omodala third in the male category. In the female category, Ms. Oliogube Okoli of Enugu village made the first position. Ms. Chidiabelo Okeke of Ubaho village came second and Chile Sharon Ruben emerged the third winner. The first positions received 100,000 Naira, second positions went home with 80,000 Naira and third positions got 70,000 Naira each. Other participants received various consolation prizes from the organizers of the annual event while a philanthropist from the community gave 100,000 Naira from first to tenth positions. In his opening speech, the chief organizing committee chairman for the 2022 Nanka Marathon, Mr. Chibolu Mogu Ekwalu, noted that Nanka youths in diaspora remains committed to improving on sports development, adding that the initiative is to foster togetherness, love, and hold talents and put smiles on the face of the youths. But before we go, a quick reminder that you can follow ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television Orca. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now a quick recap at our major stories. Governor Saludo has condemned Obusi Obuna cult related killings. General election Bishop Azel Kafu of Orca Diocese has urged Nigerians not to be swayed by money. President Buhari has signed 2023 appropriation bill. And on the foreign scene, we also told you that Ukraine, Russia anger has grown over a strike that killed dozens of troops. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Adambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the tax ahead. And that's it on the news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chidema Orangwa. Good night. <laughs>